Hello, welcome to a Q&A today. If you have any questions that you would like to present to me, uh, you can send that through my website at murielshickman.com forward slash contact booking, or you can reach me through social media, a private message through there. Uh, these questions either come from just random questions from people or uh, from my clients. And uh, I'd like to present these because, um, you know, some of these might answer some of the things that you have in mind and what you're going through. So the first one here is uh, I have a recurring health issue and I don't understand why it keeps coming back. Um, I go to the doctor and it clears up, but then another, then it keeps flaring up again. And all I can think of is just keep doing that because there's nothing else. I have no more, any alternatives. Uh, and so basically all energy is there to serve at all times. Anything that arises at any moment is there to serve. Anything that arises mentally, psychologically, or physically is coming up to show you something. It's there to present you something. And this is how you expand and learn and grow uh, and move on. Um, and all these issues that present themselves to us are, are perfect springboards, I like to say, to bounce off and to move to um, a higher way of, of living, a uh, higher frequency. So uh, if you're not ready uh, to apply your consciousness uh, to a physical ailment for self-healing, uh, you will be succumbed to the healthcare industry. And that's just the way it is, because we live within the mind matrix. And uh, science is limited within the mind unless they apply the metaphysics and alchemy of consciousness and energy. Focused intention with your consciousness to that which you need healing, uh, it's magic happens. What's considered miracles or magic, that's how it works. But if you're not ready to do any of that type of uh, healing for yourself, then that's why there's a healing industry and people, you know, um, outside yourself can help you and assist for you. And I do that, but I don't like to call myself a healer because I leave that space for people to know that there is no such thing as a healer, that, uh, there's a person out there that guides you and provides a space for you to do that yourself. And it's always been that way. Uh, so, but yeah, so if it just keeps coming back, it's there to serve whatever way that is. Uh, perhaps it's there to for you to finally apply your consciousness and your with intention in your quiet time with your breath and your intention to that ailment that you're doing and to see it dissolve or to see it already done that it's not there um, some people believe it's like making it up like this is like an imaginative things that only uh, children do uh, you know it's not something that works that it's actually real uh, so all of these questions come in when you are applying alchemy like this the true alchemy of changing um, a physical reality to change the physical manifestations to occur for physical manifestations to occur we apply the focused intention with our consciousness on to into an image and, we, and that's the imagination imaging in and we place it into creation and it physically manifests so, and I always like to say the best prayer you can say to yourself and to everyone, anyone, uh, not just here, but all of creation is, may you experience everything you need for your greater good. Your greater good may be different than my greater good, but regardless, may you experience everything that you need for your greater good. So we take a good deep breath with that. Uh, the next one here is Muriel. After our last session together, I received a setback in my finances. Uh, I was sent a bill that there is no way I will be able to pay this. This whole ordeal threw me off. Uh, I was feeling so good working with you. Do you have any suggestions? Okay, so again, applying alchemy. Applying um, energy is nothing outside the self. So when you work with uh, what this thing is called manifestation or abundance, uh, financial prosperity, whatever you want to say, uh, it's just literally thoughts create your reality. So that's the alchemical process is that we change our thoughts and it changes the emotions because you're creating your reality all the time. No one outside yourself is creating your reality. Whatever you're doing, you're drawing it to you. So it creates those thoughts, create the emotions, which draw in, that's the electric magnetic field around yourself. And it draws that to you. That's magnetism. And it draws whatever you're vibrating at to you. So your whole world around you 
is just presenting where you're at with your consciousness at the moment. So uh, when you are presented with something like, oh, surprise, there's a surprise moment, like a bill you can't pay, immediately we go into a mental mode about it, and the thoughts take us on a train ride. And we get engaged into, oh, I'm screwed. I can't do this now. Your emotions are engaged. You see with us? This is the circle that humans do. There's nothing, there's no way out. Because the human always re rely on their brain to find them the answers. And if the brain can't find you an answer to keep you safe and to, you know, to get you out of the so-called mess, then it will create emotions. And then you get locked into this, you're locked down into a, a loop of an electric magnetic uh, residence that's just driving you crazy. So this is why it happens. Uh, what we do is we suggest that we take a good deep breath. Uh, you observe the situation for at least, you give yourself a few hours, and then you choose your course of action in your time. Sometimes you just need to sit there with the rage. You know, uh, as soon as it happens, go into the immediate reaction, and then be with the reaction, and allow yourself to react. Just be angry, be frustrated, be in confusion. Just let yourself be there. That is what we do. We surrender into it and just allow the human to act itself out. It needs to. And then once you collect yourself after a shorter amount of time from doing that, then you can apply what we're saying here. Is that you can choose when the human is done having its fits, emotional fits. Okay. If you have any more questions on this, if you have anything coming up, please don't hesitate to ask me. What's the next one here? I'm going through all these transformations, but my family still sees me the same way, the same person. Uh, so uh, with this, um, that's going to happen uh, when you're changing your consciousness and because you still look the same. Uh, sometimes you go through uh, physical problems and, and things that you people are like start asking you, are you okay? But if nothing happens that they can't see, then they're going to see you the same way because they're not in, inside of you. Only you are inside of you. So you are the only one that knows what's going on there. Um, and so by knowing that, then you go forward with your actions with your family going through your transformation and knowing that you're going through that. That's all. You just allow yourself room and you navigate this way until you don't have to. Uh, and so after the grounding occurs and you get back into your body grounded into the person uh, that you expanded into after you came into your realization, then, um, yeah, then you start navigating like you were, but yet different. You become more than. You, nothing was taken away. It was added to. You could say, oh, I don't have my identity anymore. Well, what's identity? If you say, I am that I am, that's still an identity. It's more of the space in between. Or you could say all of it is. And uh, it's a multi-dimensional way of expressing or happening and all of that. So deep breath with that. These questions are, you know, some of them are shamanic questions. Some of them are from clients that uh, are going through. They're moving through the threshold, that imaginary threshold into self-realization. Uh, they're on the other side of it. Uh, so, yep. Okay, so that's that. Uh, how did you know that you were enlightened? <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, when I stopped the resistance to the human, when I stopped resisting all of those, I got to fix that. If I keep going on to this person, if I keep getting outside myself, whatever arose, I would go on to the next person and I'd go on to and get that taken care of until after I needed all of that and I was done with it. Then I would sit down in the middle of myself and I would deal with it straight on with no outside help. And through that, through the non-resistance, is when just on an odd moment of the day, it just happened. It was just, it was on with myself. I'm like, oh, that's it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It was just, and then you just kind of just keep on moving through this place. Living your human. But you're more than. I began to embrace my humanity. And that's where the human condition, they're conditioned. The masses are conditioned to be, uh, to move away from the humanness, not to embrace all of those things that are non-talkable, the non-speakable, the unmentionables, all of that, uh, and to hide it. But we can't do that anymore with this shift of frequency. Everything's coming up, rising up to clear out. Uh, 
I could actually say that I, I love you, Muriel. I could sit down with myself in my quiet hours and my very quiet hours and say, we love you, Muriel. And uh, who's this we? And I uh, move through the knowing that there's more of me, but it's not uh, something that's crazy considered to, to science or psychology. It's just I embraced all of who I am, my, all my aspects, all of it. And uh, because it's so new and because it's ethereal and something you can't prove physically, all of this is still, and it will continue to be anyway, an individual experience and happening. And it's not something you can necessarily share with the world and you don't need to, unless you're doing something like this. And that's why I do what I do here. Uh, so, uh, so that's what it happened. I love you, Muriel. Uh, how did you know? Well, Muriel couldn't really say that. There was no, oh, Muriel, I can refer myself to the second person, right? Uh, identity type of thing. Uh, yeah, nothing outside myself that I need confirmations anymore. The human still, though, to this day, is still because that's part of the human. But th the difference is, is that I know what's the difference between my human identity and... Uh, all of the rest. So that's the difference. I could go on more about that. What's next on this? Just a couple more. Uh, okay. Looks like there's one more here. I don't have all those awesome experiences of waking like you describe in your book, Soulship, um, with what happened to you. I don't remember of my past lives and I just uh, want to feel connected to all that. All that. To all of who I am, and so uh, it's it, it's a lot like building the uh, muscles. Like a gymnast needs to go and stretch and exercise and do those just crazy movements and just get limp, and to be able to do those flips and all that stuff, the gymnast needs to be able to strengthen the muscles. And so it's the same thing with this, except what we're doing is we're up doing it to our psychic muscles. So uh, it's building the psychic muscles. Um, dreaming activity even if you don't remember your dreams they start to come through uh the big themes even if there's not much detail it comes through anyway every night we dream everybody dreams every night uh, and so uh daytime visions um and all that uh uh being with what arises it's uh, it's the little things it's not so much the big fantastical things you know, people blow up all of the stuff because it's all in the mind. The mind conceptualizes, you know, all these fantastical happenings of uh, this thing called past lives or parallel lives that are playing out right now and all that. But the mind can't understand consciousness and doesn't understand this, what we call the all at once. It's locked in time and space. You could say time and space is wrapped around your consciousness. And it's true. Um, I want to mention there's a uh, Star Trek episode of The Next Generation. If you're not a Star Trek fan, that's okay. Go with me here. Uh, it was about three or four episodes in where no, uh, no one has gone before, was, I think was the name of the episode. And it had everything to do with how thoughts create our reality. <laughs> so if you want to go back to that uh, episode, you can know. Uh, just you can do a Google search if you don't want to watch it and check that out. Uh, they had it right that Gene Roddenberry is a brilliant uh, brilliant creator of that alone but the writers of all the other ones that came out and they were touching upon all of this consciousness we were touching upon consciousness uh and s the star treks are different the different uh, seasons and the different types of the star treks uh, touch upon different more uh uh they're also very unique in themselves but the next generation seems to go a lot towards that consciousness i mean the three or four episodes into the entire series they immediately talk about how thoughts create our reality and how uh, I think it's uh, Wesley, the boy character in that, uh, has a, has a uh, natural um, inclination, a natural affinity towards applying, knowing that time and space is not separate from consciousness. Or you, they said thoughts, again, because they didn't uh, understand that this whole brain consciousness isn't in the brain. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you allow it, once you start strengthening all those muscles, uh, all of a sudden your dreams start enhancing. All, um, your, uh, again, the electric magnetic frequency of you attracts that, right, that resonates to you. So you're going to start attracting all of that to you as you start opening it up. And one thing I have to say I took from shamanism, and it's a really cool, uh, and you can breathe into this, is that remember, 
whatever you are hunting, it's been hunting you the entire time. So it's not something that you have to really effort into once you just start moving your energy towards this. It's magic. That's magic. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is close it up for today, and then I'll come back with these uh, as they come. And uh, it's been a pleasure to offer this for you. Again, don't hesitate to bring your questions to me, um, either through my website at murielshickman.com forward slash contact booking or on social media. Or you can uh, set up a private uh, one-on-one session with me and uh, long-distance sessions. Uh, I've been doing this for years now, so... Uh, I get really good at it, and I expanded my work, and that's available for you if you need that. Okay, so don't hesitate. You can go onto my website, check out the reviews, and do all that. I offer quite a bit. Um, so, with that being said, thank you so much for you being here today, and uh, many blessings on your journey. Namaste. Hello, welcome to.